A few weeks ago, I'd mentioned in a YouTube video that I found the cheapest SSD on eBay to be an Intel Optane 16 gigabyte M.2. Well, I've heard of Optane and they're pretty cool. One of my viewers had mentioned or expressed the view that, well, for $5, they can't be any good. Haha, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this one can be pretty good. It's just e-waste, that's the main reason. And it's 16 gigabytes, that's the other reason. But for $5, that's the perfect kind of little size for a small, lightweight distribution. Now I have my Intel i3, oh, Intel Nuke motherboard, which I bought in 2016. And I got this because I've been out of SSDs. And then when I went to go film this video, I found this and I have no idea what's on it. So at least now I have two SSDs because that's the thing about SSDs. They always find a home somewhere, whether it be a random laptop or something else. I have a large number of 16 gigabyte ones. They, they tend to find a lot of use. If this works, it'll be so nice to not be scrounging around little drives and SD cards and failing to put windows on it. So this Intel Nuke has been my little mobile computer for the longest time now. I mean, it's supposed to go into the rest of the case for the grid case 1520, but that never happens because I always have to take this thing back out and take it somewhere to clone a drive or to open something up or whatever. It's incredibly useful. Now I have it displaying this iPad screen inside of the grid case monitor case with running off USB going to a USB to 12 volt adapter. And where is the power button? Where is the power button? There's the power button. No wonder I was so confused. Okay, let's get going. Oh, right, I forgot. The Wi-Fi antenna is in the top of the case. Well, we kind of need that. I just realized the Wi-Fi RF cable connections are underneath the, S uh, the SSD. I think that's the way they go. 50% chance of being right. I haven't seen this thing together in years. Oh, I thought that was peel apart something. It's just tape. <laughs> oh, there is something on the front. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I got this back in the day, disposable income back when I worked at Apple and uh, ripped it apart. Haven't put it together really since, I don't think. Okay, this is pretty funny. So Crystal Disk Info has the normal version, but they also have this, I don't know who this character is, so I had to download it, because why not? Um, <laughs> this is funny. So the SST has only been turned on 16 times. That's interesting. A few of those times was me, probably four times. And it may have been reflashed. Hard to say though. I don't think they go through that effort for four dollars. I think they would just throw it around. And sadly, this thing only gives five seconds of of use with the mouse, and then it's it starts detecting all sorts of noise. We don't have much room left on here, so let's do a quick a quick test. We only have 800 megabytes or 600 megabytes free. Ooh, 917.8. Now this would be good for any system that's lightweight but needing a lot of memory uh, bandwidth. While that test is running, it looks like this drive is not very happy. I got it at an e-waste facility. It's had power on count 
2,800. Power on hours, 7,800. Now that is pretty good. I am really happy. You could dump that thing in like five seconds. Maybe 10 seconds. Let's see how long it takes to boot up. Why doesn't this require a password? I turned that off. Wow, that is fast. Holy hell, that is fast. I think we can go a little bit faster. Can we get Haiku to work on this one, I wonder? I forgot that it had such an interesting BIOS with a mouse and everything. Oh, that's so weird. I'm going to hit F10. It's actually a key combination on this little Raspberry Pi keyboard. I've tried this, it just gets stuck on one of these icons. And I used Belina Etcher to, oh! Yeah, I used Belina Etcher to put the file on there. I've used Rufus too. Let's see, can we actually get... Okay, there's, there's no movement on the mouse. Maybe I should just let it sit. I've had this happen once before and I couldn't get anything done with it. It's been like this for a few minutes. I think it's uh, not quite usable. See, this is the kind of issue I have with these sort of things. They just don't work. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's not like, oh, I just didn't do it right. It's like, well, I don't, I don't have any ability to do anything. There, people say, well, you can't work on your own car if you don't open the, if, if, if you don't have a, a, a wrench and get your hands dirty. But I can't even open the hood. The latch isn't even working. Well, how can I even get a footing? Okay, let's see. No, okay, and I do not know the system enough to, um, there's no options, it seems. Nothing comes up that's obvious, at least. So I saw that holding space does something. Holding space seemed to actually fix the issue. That's weird. No, it can't be that simple, can it? Weird. Should have a little dialog box saying hold space for, um, hmm. For a moment there, it lost all signal. It didn't recognize the mouse. I had to unplug it and plug it back in. Oh, come on. There we go. Oof. Who knew clicking the mouse would be so hard, but this little thing, I feel bad that I even spent the money on it. Let's see if it can run without the uh, USB. Well, I can't, I can't get it to open up again. 
maybe this had nothing to do with it. Had to use a USB keyboard because it didn't... Oh, wow, so I guess this is what I was supposed to do. It wasn't even bringing it up before. Um, I'll use... See what happens. Yeah, I guess so. Space wasn't actually doing anything. Well, we have something up there. It couldn't pick up this keyboard input when I plugged it in after the fact. So now, see, does it do anything else? No, it's not. Okay. So I might not be able to, I can't do it from the start. I have to do it after the first little bit, if that even is what the issue is. So I can't do space now, but I can do it now. Oh wow, now it seems like it froze when I connected up my mouse and reboot. Does my mouse freeze it? Oh, safe mode. Doesn't look so safe. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Well, it's been like an hour or so, and I, I keep going through the safe mode settings, trying various different things, and I can't really figure out what it is. All I can figure out is putting it in safe mode. Does it? But even disable. I, I went through and disabled some system components and um, didn't really have any luck. Either it hangs here, or it hangs at the blue screen. So it seems like I'm not really able to get to the problem, and I'm not sure how to run diagnostics while you're in safe mode. Wait a minute. Safe mode didn't even work this time. Damn, safe mode was working before. Now safe mode doesn't even work. Are these just causing issues? And it's the same thing. That does not feel like something I can fix. Let's try installing Lubuntu again. I have Ubuntu installed and I'm currently upgrading it. So we'll see what we get. It's been a few days and I honestly can't remember what it is exactly that I was planning to do with the Lubuntu installation. So I think I'm just gonna put Windows 10 back on it and play with that later. Especially because Lubuntu, I didn't see a setting to scale things to the screen size because this is a 4K screen, it's a little bit Teeny tiny. That was weird. I've never seen this menu. And I also didn't select to not have a log in automatically. I should have done that. Then we could have seen how quick it was, but oh well. So I tried installing Windows N, and unfortunately Windows N, well before it was 600 megabytes free, now it's 444 megabytes free. So that's not quite good. Um, yeah, that when it seems like Windows N is actually even bigger. Well, this is interesting. This time installing Windows 10, there's no option not to use and not to add an account. I didn't have this before. I just clicked don't use account or offline mode or whatever it was. But this time, the same exact install media, the same exact Windows 10 Home, it is different. That's weird. Oh, y'all, that looks sick. 
Look at this. What the hell? <laughs> oh! I got parsec set up. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got so mad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, you heard me, right? Like, yeah, you? yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so I just got Farsec running on it. I don't know why I went to this resolution. It should have just gone to the 1080p, but... Um, not so... Just, just move, just... Yeah, I'm not meaning to press it. It's just anytime you drag your finger across it, it stutters and does all sorts of weird things. And then sometimes if you let it sit, it just starts detecting random button presses all the time. Oh, this one's got a CPU. Uh, oh, host resolution. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the uh, the client is a little too slow. Come on, go. Thank you. One of these days I'll make a video about this thing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.